This is the DJI Mini 2, and it's not the best drone that DJI makes. It doesn't have the best frame rates, and it doesn't have the best resolution. However, with the power of color grading, we can make the footage from this drone look incredible. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and liftoff. Okay, so we are now back at the computer and let me jump straight into showing you how we did this awesome looking color grade. Okay, so this is what our footage is looking like straight out of camera. And one thing that I wanna talk about before we actually hop into this color grade is how you should be exposing your footage when you are actually filming your footage. Because this drone doesn't have a flat color profile, it means that the whites and the highlights can easily clip. So you want to make sure that your highlights or your clouds or your sky in this case are properly exposed and you can see the detail in the sky because it'll be a lot easier to bring out the detail in the shadows than it will be to bring out the detail in the highlights. So keep that in mind when you're actually filming your footage to expose for the sky or expose for the highlights in your shot. So the first thing we're gonna do is create our nodes. And of course, because we're trying to make a color grade that can be used for pretty much almost any drone footage, especially drone footage that doesn't have a flat color profile like some of the higher end DJ cameras this is gonna be a simple node tree that you can reuse for multiple different clips so let's hop into it so we're gonna create eight nodes so let me just create mine I'm gonna press alt s one two three four five six seven eight so let me just realign these and I'm gonna start labeling let me just get these all organized you can always right click press clean up node graph and everything will be nice and organized so our first one is going to be labeled CST in our second one is going to be labeled expo, as in exposure. Our third one is going to be labeled WB, as in white balance. Our fourth will be labeled sat, as in saturation. Our fifth one will be labeled look. And of course, this is where we're gonna be putting on our look. Now our sixth one is gonna be labeled C, CST out. And then our seventh one is going to be labeled detail. And our last one is going to be labeled grain. I'm be adding some grain on the end of this. So the first nodes that we're gonna start with is the CST in and the CST out. This is color space transform. So with this footage, it is pretty much already in Rec. 709, but we all know that Rec. 709 doesn't give you as much push and pull, I like to call it push and pull, that a log format would give you. What we can do is we can transform this into a flatter color profile, which will make it easier to actually color grade our footage. So let's do that right now. So we're gonna click our CST in node, we're gonna go to effects, color space transform and we're going to put our input color space to rec 709 and then we're going to put our input gamma to gamma 2.4 now the reason why we're doing rec 709 is because this drone comes in a standard color profile so it doesn't come in any type of log color profile so that standard color profile is normally rec 709 so then we're going to transfer it into a different color profile which you'll see in a minute we're going to put our output color space to davinci y gamut and then we're gonna put our output gamma to Cineon Film Log. And watch what happens when I click Cineon Film Log. We get into a flatter color profile. Now this isn't exactly what a log color profile would look like out of the camera, but when we have this flatter profile, it's gonna make it easier to add contrast and add color, and it's gonna be much better than that simple Rec. 709 that we had before. Now the next node we're gonna touch is gonna be our CSD out node, and we're actually gonna convert it back to that Rec. 709. Watch. So we're gonna go to input color space, scroll down to DaVinci Y gamut, because remember we converted our footage from Rec. 709 to Cineon Film Log, and now we're gonna convert it to Cineon Film Log back to Rec. 709. So our input now is gonna be DaVinci Y gamut, and our input gamma is going to be Cineon Film Log. Let's click it right here. And now our output color space is gonna be Rec. 709 and our output gamma is going to be 
Gamma 2.4. Now, if we actually do a bypass and we take off all of our nodes and put them back on, we see that the footage actually does not change at all. Why? Because we've gone from Rec. 709 to Cineon Film Log back to Rec. 709. But what the interesting thing is why we went back and forth is because now the nodes in between those two CSTs still have that Cineon Film Log. So we're actually going to do all of our editing in that flatter color profile. So now that we've done that, let's start making our footage look gorgeous. So we're going to start over with our exposure node and we're just going to be messing with the curves. So I just want to bring down the highlights just a little bit. And I just want to add just a slight S curve. This footage doesn't need much of one because I'm already kind of liking how it is. I'm just going to add a little bit of an S curve just to make the highlights pop. I like the, I like the details that we have in the highlights, so I want to preserve them, but still make it bright. And I'm actually going to bring down the shadows a little bit, bring up the shadows a little bit. And this is looking okay. So we've done a little bit, we just added a little bit of contrast, made the highlights pop a little bit, add a little bit of contrast in the shadows. And so that's good for me. Of course, that's gonna vary based on your footage, um, but you just wanna be messing with pretty much the curves for the exposure part. Next, we're gonna move on to white balance. I see that the clouds are a little bit on the bluer side. So we're just gonna add a little bit of warmness to this and we're just gonna use the temp sliders. That's all we need to use for this. So let's turn this temp sliders to the right. That's looking a bit better and that's looking good. For me, landing at about 160, 150 is looking good for me and we can just click the before and after of that. So you see, we've taken out a little bit of the blue in the clouds and made it a little bit more of a neutral tone. Now the next note for us is saturation. So I'm just going to bring up a little bit of saturation, make the grass a little bit more greener because it's just looking a little bit dull at the moment. So bring up the saturation. I'm going to bring it up to maybe about, let's see how, how it's looking. I think I'm going to bring it up to about like about a six, about a 70, bring it up to about 70. Okay. This is looking good. And I'm just going to go back to white balance and just raise up the temp just slightly, just ever so slightly, just to 200. I just I just went from 150 to 200, so ever so slightly, just because of this footage specifically, it's just a little bit too blue for me. So now that we're done with the saturation, we're now gonna move on to the look. And this is where we're gonna start making our footage look, you know, how we want it to look. We're gonna have some oranges, we're gonna add a little bit of that warmness in, into the mid-tones, and it's gonna look beautiful. So I'm gonna go to gamma, which represents mid-tones, and I'm just going to push it a little bit towards the orange. So let's just push that over there. And I'm already seeing this footage is starting to look nice. I'm already liking how it's looking. I might go to gain, which is highlights and just push it. Oh, there we go. We push it down to the magentas. And so now we have that little bit of warmness in the grass and a little bit of magenta, a little bit of green in the sky. So that's looking nice for me. Maybe I can push it a little bit more, making that look really good. I'm liking how that's looking. I'm liking how that's looking right there. We just touched the gamma and we just touched the gain and we already went, let's do the before and after. This is the before, this is the after from the look node and it's looking absolutely fantastic just by moving the gain a little bit and just by moving the gamma. Now we only have two nodes left and these are gonna come after the CST out node and the first one is our detail. Now the thing is with these DJI cameras, especially the cheaper ones, they, they might be 4K but they don't have that much detail throughout the image. A lot of the times they're going to be a little bit lower resolution 4K because they have a smaller sensor. So we're going to be bringing out a little bit more of that detail throughout the entire image. So we're going to make sure the detail node is selected and we're going to go to mid-tone detail. And I want to show you what happens with these clouds as we start to raise the mid-tone details. You can see that a little bit more details are popping out of the clouds and we're going to actually go up to about 70. So let's land at about 17. Let me show you the before and after. Look at the before and after. Look at the top of the clouds right here. Paying attention to the top of the clouds up here. And that before and after, you see so much more pop in the mid-tones. It just looks even clearer. You can see more details around the, around the cloud and it's just looking like a cleaner image. And we can look at the overall before and after. We can see even with these telephone cables, electricity cables, 
you can see that there's a little bit more pop around them and everything just has a little bit more clarity to it. So now let's move on to our final node, which is grain. We're gonna add a little bit of grain over the entire image. So let's now make sure that our last node, our grain node is selected. Let's go to film grain, drag that on. And I like to do 16 millimeter or normally 16 millimeter uh, 250D. And I like to isolate this. Let me just isolate the grain. And so I like to make sure the softness is completely down and increase the grain size slightly. So now let's take off the isolation and you might not be able to see it on YouTube, but the grain is definitely there. Let's do a little before and after. And of course, it's going to come up a lot better when you have high quality exports, but I'm not sure entirely that you'll be able to see it properly on YouTube. So now that we've touched all the nodes, let's do a quick before and after. Look at that before and look at that after. We have greener greens, a beautiful looking sky, a popping looking image. And this is from the one of the cheapest drones that DJI sells. This is the Mavic Mini 2. This drone is, I, I got my drone for only $500. So this is one of the cheapest drones that DJI sells on the market right now. And we're getting a fantastic, beautiful looking image out of this drone that can be used on a multiple of different projects. And the great part about this technique is that it can be applied to any drone. Even if you have a drone that doesn't have all the fancy log features and everything like that, you can still get a beautiful looking image if you expose for the sky, make sure the clouds are in detail, and if you transform it into a flatter log profile and then start color grading from there. So go out there with some cheaper drones, get some beautiful landscape videos, come back into your computer and do a dope color grading edit. If you thought this video was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you all next time.